grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome to worship in person and online here at Haygood today. My name is Beth Givens and it's my joy to serve as the lead pastor here at Haygood. I want to welcome all of you to worship today and say a special word of welcome if you're here for the first time. This is a weird Sunday to be here for the first time, y'all. So please make those folks feel welcome. I'm joined in worship leadership today by Pastor Brittany Toner, Carol Lawyer, Chris Terrell, Carol Woodall, Joan Pye, Katrina Weaver, our chancel choir, our handbell choir, our praise team, our tech team, all y'all who are leading worship today. If you are here for the first time, we encourage you to fill out a connect card so that we can get to know you and you can get to know us. Those are in your pew racks. There is also a wealth of information out in uh, the lobby about Haygood and our ministries here. Printed copies of our weekly email tell you what is coming up. A couple of things that I want to highlight. Um, we begin a new season of meeting our neighbors at Parks After Dark this Thursday. Um, every Thursday from 6 to 9, we'll be out at Williams Farm Park building Legos. Um, sign up to volunteer. It's a great way to spend the Thursday evening getting to know our friends during the summer. We also have several new summer small group studies that are beginning next um, Sunday morning, and you can find out more about those in the Beacon. This morning, we conclude our worship series called Know God. Today, we are focusing on knowing God through knowing love, and in particular, the love that we have experienced together as I have served as your pastor for the last three years. As we move into this time of worship, I invite you to take a deep breath. To let go of all that you are holding and to breathe in the Holy Spirit of the living God who is waiting for our worship. Will you join me in our breakthrough prayer as we begin? Dear God, unbind us, your people here at this crossroads, as we seek to grow as your disciples. Reveal to Haygood UMC your will and your direction. Teach us how to welcome and care for others, serve you, and share your good news with our community. Amen. Sisters and brothers, please stand as you are comfortable and join with us in the invitation to worship. Listen to the world sing God's praises. The sound of children laughing, the feel of a gentle breeze, the taste of a home-cooked meal, the fresh smell of morning. God's steadfast love is everywhere around us. Listen to the world sing God's praises. In friendships restored, in reconciled relations, in love refreshed. God's steadfast love is everywhere around us. May God's love be present to us in this time together. That God's presence might be known through us in all the earth. Amen. Please remain standing as you're comfortable and join in our singing of praise. Walking the wayside, lost on a lonely road. I was chasing the highlight, trying to satisfy my soul. All the lies I believed in left me crying like.
There's honey in the rock. All the kids are invited down front with me. Bigger kids can leave, I guess. All the kids are welcome. Do we have enough room? Ooh, I love it when this happens. Everybody do this with me. Take a deep breath. Oh, the congregation didn't too. Everybody take a breath. Feel better? Good morning. I love that some of us yawned when I did that. We don't know how we need to take a deep breath sometimes. We forget about it. Well, today is a very big day. Do you know why it's a big day? Because Miss, Miss Pastor, Beth, Pastor Beth is leaving 
Yeah, because Pastor Beth is moving on. There's some other reasons why it's a big day. Any others? Ooh, stumped you. What day is it? It's Communion Sunday. It's Communion Sunday, yes. What is another reason today is special? We're all together in one service. Because we're all together in one service. Everybody go, aw. Very nice. So who of you normally goes to 930? Who normally goes to 930? And who normally goes to 1045? And who goes to both? Okay, so we're all kind of mixed up and different. Well, today we are going to be staying in church all together to celebrate. So one of the ways we're going to celebrate is, I need a volunteer. Come here, James. Chubby. So we made this giant card for Pastor Beth. And inside it says a bunch of things about how we love you and we're going to miss you. And so if you didn't get a chance to sign it, you can sign it after. So if you can, will you do me a favor? Will you run up and give that to Pastor Beth? You can say aw again. Yeah, we love a good aw. Because here we know that Pastor Beth loves us. And so one more thing. Because we're staying in service today, normally I give you guys like little bags with things, but I think we can do something a little more fun. So we have church bingo where if you see these different things happening during the service, you cross it out. And if anyone can get a full bingo card, you get a prize at the end. Don't come up to me in the middle of service and go, bingo, while we're doing communion. I love the gusto, but yes, questions. Normally, yeah, you can just do bingo. You can get a cross, but there's an extra special prize if you get all of them. Oh, another question. She said, I saw it said Jesus Christ on there. Would that immediately be crossed out? Because Jesus is present? Yeah, I'll give you that one. All right, so anything you see or hear counts. So if it already happened, you can cross it out. It's a pass it around, please. Pass, take it and pass it. There we go. If there is not enough, my friend Miss Abby, Miss Abby, will you raise your hand? Miss Abby has extra bingo cards. Do we have just enough? Oh, I love it. And I have great news for the congregation. We have congregation bingo cards for those who wants them. So Miss Abby, if you'll raise your hand, Miss Abby will give some out to you. And maybe someone can help Miss Abby if more people they want. Do you guys need a crayon? Tell you what, grab a crayon on your way down because we need to pray and get the service still going. So. Thank you. All right. While that is going on, I love your gusto. We're going to pray. So, bingo cards down. Yes, you have another question? Yeah, we'll find out. So, repeat after me. Congregation, you can repeat after me as well. Sound good? Dear God. Thank you. For Pastor Beth. Thank you. Thank you. For a big church. Full of love. We love you. And thanks for loving us. And all God's children said. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can pick up a crayon and go back to your seats. Scripture lesson for this morning comes from the Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter. I invite you to hear these words as we read aloud. Jesus said, As the Father loved me, I too have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I kept my Father's commandments 
and remain in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. This is my commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. No one has greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. Jesus continues, You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants any longer, because servants don't know what their master is doing. Instead, I call you friends, because everything I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you could go and produce fruit and so that your fruit could last. As a result, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. I give you these commandments so that you can love each other. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Will you join your hearts in prayer with mine? Come Holy Spirit and take the words from your gospel that Chris and Carol have shared. Come Holy Spirit and take the words that I share. Come Holy Spirit and take the meditations of our minds and hearts that by your power at work in us, you might weave us together in this time to reflect more deeply the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I mention Legos? I have not played Legos recently, but apparently it's on the bingo card, so. I find that when people talk about faith, um, myself included, we we often talk about uh, choosing to follow Christ or choosing to go to a particular church, our our choice. I choose this, I choose that. I often wonder whether we really think about that statement when we make it in passing because frankly, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense with our theology as United Methodists. You see, we believe that God is the first actor in faith. God is the one who chooses us. God reaches out to us with prevenient grace, the grace that comes to us before we comprehend it. That's why we baptize infants, believing that salvation does not rest on our initiative or even on the capability of our response. Salvation is a gift of God through Christ Jesus. The idea that we choose Christ also doesn't make sense as we hear Jesus today talk about discipleship. In this text, Jesus says it explicitly to his disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you. We are the chosen. We are the ones called out of darkness into God's light. We are the ones chosen for a purpose, and that purpose is to know love and to be love in the world. As preacher and scholar David Luce writes, this matters, I think, because if it's finally up to us to choose Jesus, to remain in him, to obey his commandments, to pursue happiness, or to choose joy. If it is up to us, then we are lost. We simply don't do it. Maybe we can't. We can try, and there is something valiant and noble and important about trying. But when push comes to shove, whether you're telling someone to accept Jesus or choose joy, you may be giving good advice, but you're not proclaiming the gospel. 
the gospel proclaims that we are chosen. We are chosen. Chosen to go and bear lasting fruit. Our action is a response to God's choosing. It is a response that is imperfect, that is always being perfected by grace. Our response is a surrender to God's choosing of us. God has chosen us, God loves us, and God wants to use us to love a broken world. In fact, Jesus says in this passage, we are commanded to love one another, to love the world as Jesus has loved us. As we conclude our series on knowing God, we end at the most important place. We know God when we know love. Extravagant, sacrificial, joyous, life-giving love. When we know this love, we can bear fruit in the world. And when we are steeped and grounded in this love, when it lives in us and, and flows through us, then we are so at one with Christ that whatever we need, whatever we ask in God's name, we will receive it. Now, now this isn't some sort of transactional promise that Jesus makes that will have everything we need when we ask it in God's name. It's not the sort of thing we said to our children, if you are good at the store, I'll let you pick out something at the checkout register. Receiving what we need from God is not a reward for loving. Rather, when we love purely, freely, and joyously as God loves us, we will quite naturally receive God's good gifts. When we are in deep and abiding relationship with God, we will discover God's gifts in our lives, in our communities, and in the world around us. <clears throat> I hope and pray that as we have walked together as pastor and congregation, we have grown in our deep and abiding relationship with God. We are here today where it all began. If you were here to remember in July of 2021, when I arrived to serve you, we were still emerging from the pandemic. We were worshiping in this space, in one blended worship service. One of the first things that we would tackle together was our next steps in worship, which we discerned and began in October of that year. In my first sermon series called Building Blocks, I shared with you seven things that I have come to value about faith communities throughout my ministry. Those seven things are story, community, service, joy, hospitality, abundance, and innovation. Interesting, is it, isn't it, that love was not on the list? But I would say today that it was, just between the lines. Because we come to love one another when we know one another's stories. We come to love one another in a community where our love for each other and for God allows us to love one another despite our very real differences. Our love flows from this inner community out to our neighbors through acts of service. People know that we love each other and they know that we love God when they see the joy that is in us. Hospitality is the act of loving the world enough to always create space for strangers in our midst. Seeing our ministry from a perspective of abundance and innovation allows us to see how God continues to love us by doing a new thing in our midst. It all begins with love. This is not a Hallmark Channel kind of love. It's a love that invites obedience and surrender. 
It's not love that, that we can choose. It, it's love with a capital L. <clears throat> love with a capital L that chooses us. Our choice lies in whether we will allow ourselves to be chosen, to be stretched, to be poured out for the sake of sharing that love in the world. We have done some of that together these last three years, but your work is, is not over. As many of you know, I did not intend to serve for only three years as your pastor. This is my second shortest appointment. I tend to like to hang around with folks for just shy of a decade. But I'm also an itinerant elder sent by the bishop, and I do feel called to this new role to which Bishop Sue has appointed me, the role of superintendent for the Coastal Virginia District. I trust that our lay leaders, both leadership board members and, and leaders in all of our ministries, will work with Pastor Doug and continue to work with Pastor Brittany and the rest of the staff to deepen and expand your calling in this season. I believe that God continues to beckon each of us and all of us to grow in the ways that this community is a beacon of love through welcoming, caring, serving, and sharing. I know I will delight in watching your story continue to unfold in the years ahead. God has chosen you, Haygood, to bear lasting fruit in this community. May we all listen to where God is calling us in this season of transition, and may we love one another and the world boldly and extravagantly. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our response, number 2172, in the faith we sing, we are called, verses 1 and 3. You may be seated. Um, Marie Porter is coming to join me. Um, and Marie is, where's the mic? <laughs> Marie's going to have a microphone in a hot second. And um, one of the joys and one of the ways that this community is a beacon of love in our community. So, whoa, sorry. We are so proud of our students um, at Haygood that have achieved academic scholarships. And not only are they not only are they doing well in college, but they also are um, busy in the communities, still being active in their communities and caring um, 
also in doing things here at Haygood in, when they're here on their breaks. And so we want to acknowledge them, give them some scholarship money. And also I wanted to let you know that we have three circles that also take care of them during the school years and encourage them and send them little goodie bags um, so that they are always remembered. So I want to um, first acknowledge uh, Annika Erickson. Is she here? She's busy. Okay. Annika goes to Christopher Newport University. And Jack Marcus, who goes to Elon University. Ella Dembitz, who goes to VCU. Carmen LaGrange. I don't know that she's, she's in Greece right now, so we'll hold that. I was gonna say her mom might be here. Mm -hmm. Neil Bowman, he goes to ODU. And Seska Tripoli, who's also going to ODU. And last, uh, Monica Brandon, she goes to Virginia Wesleyan, and she um, is not here, but we'll give it to her. So thank you very much. As we think um, about how our gifts make a difference, you've just seen one way that your gifts make a difference here at Hey Good. Yesterday, the team going to Appalachia Service Project in July held their final fundraiser, a car wash. They raised about $1,200. That's great for washing cars. <clears throat> As this team prepares to travel to West Virginia, uh, they'll be commissioned on July 14th um, and traveling beginning July 20th. They will be showing God's love through making homes warmer, safer, and drier. And I am reminded of the legacy of love through service that has been a part of Haygood through this ministry for over four decades. Your gifts make this possible. Your gifts make a difference. You may give financial gifts to Haygood online in the offering bowl that is in the lobby or by mailing a check to us. As we prepare to turn to the table this morning, we want to lift up congregational concerns. Um, I want to invite your prayers for uh, Kathy Busby and her um, daughters um, as um, she moves through some hopefully days of peace and comfort. Kathy is 96. That's what I thought. Okay, 96 years young. Let us pray. Holy God, as we gather this morning, we know that many of us carry things on our hearts, that our lives are complicated and full of places that need your presence, your direction, your mercy. We pray that you'll pour your mercy out on Kathy, on Patsy and her sister and their families, and surround them with your presence and peace. We pray for all of the situations that we hold in our hearts, for the brokenness of the world around us. And as we gather at your table, we remember that it is your love that can make us whole. Amen. Morning, we respond to God's word by sharing in Holy Communion. We are going to have two serving stations at the head of the center aisle. You are invited to come forward by the center aisle. You're invited as you come to extend your hands in the shape of a cross or a manger, whatever it looks like to you. It's kind of like a Rorschach test. Um, and I invite you, though, to do that so that the bread servers may place bread into your hands um, without exchanging a lot of germs. Um, then you may choose. You may either take an individual cup of juice from the tray 
or you may dip the bread into the cup and consume by intinction. Um, and that's just the bread, not the fingers. Um, we do have gluten-free communion available, and we would invite you, if you are not able to come forward, um, we will come and serve you where you are seated at the conclusion of serving um, the body. Um, our choir will be leading us um, in song or ministering to us in song during communion, and then we'll come and receive at the end. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Almighty God, you love us. of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. And now I invite you to join us in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Wondrous and merciful God, we thank and praise you because we did not choose you, but you chose us. You destined us to become your friends from before the foundation of the world. You showed steadfast love and faithfulness to your covenant people and remembered your promises in every generation. Greater love hath no one than you because in Christ you laid down your life and turned us from servants into friends and by your spirit, you raise us up to be your beloved companions forever. And so we gladly thank you with angels and archangels and all who with you, your risen and ascended son, sit at your right hand on high, singing the hymn of your unending praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he on who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of joys and surprises, your son's apostles were astounded that you sent your Holy Spirit upon the Gentiles and all the earth was awakening to the praise of your name. You invite us to join your company through baptism and sustain us in fellowship through this meal of memory and hope. Send your Holy Spirit upon your church that it may bear the image of your crucified and resurrected Son. By the power of the same Spirit, bless this bread and this cup that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Who at your supper with his disciples took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith which we proclaim. Christ has died. Christ has died. Overwhelming God, you give your children faith that celebrates your sovereignty. Renew that faith among any who see your son's continuing crucifixion more evidently than his glorious resurrection. Restore and inspire all who in the face of evil and suffering feel less like conquerors and more like conquerors. Walk with those who find your commandments a burden rather than a gift. 
Hasten the day that we shall draw into the banquet of your kingdom and you fill heaven and earth with the triumph of your grace. Ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And so come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this sacrament often and you who have not been for a long, long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who chooses us, who invites us to meet him here at this table. All are welcome. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share in the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. The table is ready. Let us keep the feast. I'll invite our servers to come forward.
running after me. 
Let us pray. O oh Christ, you have chosen us and loved us extravagantly at this table. Send us into the world to love it extravagantly. Amen. I'm going to invite Mike Fogel, our lay leader. Yeah, I was like, he was close. He was just here to come forward. We have a, um, a ritual of farewell in the United Methodist Church. Um, and one of the things that um, we always do as clergy who are ordained is leave a stole, which is the symbol of our service um, for the one who will succeed us. And so I am leaving... Um, I'm leaving a stole for Doug that I bought in Israel in 1997. It was sewn by Palestinian hands. And I feel like that's a very appropriate passing of the mantle at this season in our world's life. That's a little wrinkle. Do you have something you needed to say first, or are you following along? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, what is it? Is it? I thank you, members and friends of Haygood United Methodist Church, for the love and support you have shown me while I have ministered among you. I am grateful for the ways that my leadership has been accepted. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made. As I leave, I will carry with me all that I have learned here. Your turn. New slide. Receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and accept that you now lead and minister most openly in this church. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not lead to a severe departure. Your gratitude and forgiveness and I forgive you, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. I release you from turning to me and depending on me. I encourage your continuing ministry here and will pray for you and for your new pastor, Doug Sasser, and leave this stole for him as he assumes the mantle of pastoral leadership here at Haygood. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose steadfast love for us is from everlasting to everlasting, we give you thanks for cherished memories and commend one another into your care as we move in new directions. Keep us one, in, keep us one in your love forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let me invite you to stand as you're comfortable as we sing our commitment, number 2175, in your faith we sing, together we serve.
In the role of district superintendent, I do get to hold you accountable. So go and be love in the world. Fiercely, boldly, relentlessly, because Christ has chosen you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, whose blessing rests upon us this day and always. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen.